All right, we wait, ahead, we don't wait in there? Okay. Well, look, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for coming out. And I especially want to thank all these uh, volunteers uh, who are working so hard. Uh, and once this press conference is over and I take questions from the media, uh, we'll be able to visit again uh, for a few more minutes. Uh, I want you to know I stand before you today in Shreveport, Louisiana. I'm encouraged, I'm excited, I'm optimistic, both about the outcome of the election, but also about the future of the great state of Louisiana. Uh, only two days to go until the election. I can tell you my opponent, uh, Mr. Rasponi, is extremely nervous, and he should be. Uh, he's invited the president for the third time to come to Louisiana to campaign for him. Um, and obviously, he's trying to nationalize this race because that's the only shot he has. He cannot win this race based on Louisiana issues uh, because he hasn't demonstrated any knowledge about how state government works. Uh, he doesn't have any vision for the state of Louisiana, and to the extent that he has spoken with any specificity about his policy proposals, they sound an awful lot like warmed over failed policies of Bobby Jindal that ran our state so deep into the ditch. Uh, if you recall four years ago, I inherited the largest budget deficit in the history of our state. It exceeded $2 billion. We had already cut under Governor Jindal's leadership higher education more than any other state in the nation over his eight years in office and raised tuition more than any other state in the nation. And at the same time, $3 billion were swept out of trust funds and spent in the budget over his eight years for recurring expenditures. So make no mistake about it. Our state was deep in the ditch. The economy wasn't working. Uh, we're doing much, much better uh, now. You know, and, and I think that's borne out by the fact that last week when the president came to Munro uh, in order to rally for Mr. Uh, at the time that, that he was doing that, the White House Communications Office uh, sent out a series of tweets and information <laughs> that you see demonstrated uh, right here. Uh, the economy in Louisiana, over 21,000 jobs added over the last three years. The unemployment rate down from 6% to 4.3%. Uh, Wages up for blue-collar workers. Wa uh, the energy industry is booming with uh, Louisiana leading uh, the nation in liquid liquefied natural gas exports. The jobless rate reaching its lowest level in more uh, than a decade, uh, adding 21,000 jobs and, and so forth. He was right. They said the Pelican State is booming. He was right. And what he proved was Eddie Rispone has been lying all along. Yeah. <laughs> Eddie Rispone has been lying all along. Uh, these are the facts, and they, they uh, support exactly uh, what I have been saying. We actually have the largest economy in the history of the state of Louisiana right now. We have the greatest amount of personal income ever recorded in the history of Louisiana uh, right now. Uh, so we're going in the right direction. There's no doubt about it. We've made a lot of progress over the last four years, and yes, we still have challenges. Uh, but you know what? We can meet those challenges now from a position of strength, not the position of weakness, which is where we were uh, four years ago. You know, the, the, the fact of the matter is Eddie Rispone has been feeding phony talking points uh, to the president on a whole number of issues, not just the economy. You know, for example, you're going to hear the president in all likelihood say something about the Second Amendment as it relates to me. Obviously, he doesn't know me. He doesn't know that I've been a lifelong a supporter of the Second Amendment. I've been a gun owner since I was nine years old, and Santa Claus brought me a 20-gauge Featherlight Ithaca pump uh, shotgun uh, that I recently was able to give to my son, uh, John Miller. Um, I spent many years in the Army, as you all know, training on weapon systems that Mr. Rispone uh, can't even fathom. Uh, so the fact of the matter is I have been a strong proponent of the Second Amendment, and I don't hesitate to disagree with anyone uh, who would seek to limit the uh, right of law-abiding citizens to keep and bear arms as guaranteed uh, by the Second Amendment. Uh, you all know me. Uh, you know that I am pro-life, but I'm, that my pro-life views also lead, lead me to believe that the Medicaid expansion was the right thing to do, and it has, saved, it has saved lives in the state of Louisiana as well. Sometimes they talk about car insurance. You know, the fact of the matter is car insurance in Louisiana is too high, but over the last couple of years, it's actually been going down. Uh, State Farm has had four rate cuts in the last two years, a total of 10 percent, but Farm Bureau and Progressive have also lowered their, their insurance rates. And look, if you don't believe me, listen to Steve Scalise. Uh, he made an ad for Jim Donlin, who was seeking re-election as insurance commissioner, and he said the exact same thing because it's true. 
Now, we have some more work to do. One of the things we can do is we can start regulating insurance companies. They should not be allowed to charge a higher premium to someone just because they are poor, just because they are a widow, or just because they are blue-collar workers. Because we know right now, not only are they allowed to do this, they are doing this in the state of Louisiana. Even when those individuals have superior driving records, they still pay more. And we need to stop that through regulation. Uh, and I will also work uh, with the legislature to do what we can legislatively uh, in order to move this issue forward and, and lower uh, insurance, uh, car insurance rates even further. The other thing they'll talk about is I'm some sort of a radical liberal. The people of Louisiana know better than that. I am squarely in the middle of the political spectrum. I have been since I first ran for office uh, at, to the state legislature in 2007. That hasn't changed, and that's the way we've been governing. Uh, what I am is a radical Louisiana. I've always put politics behind people. People come first, uh, and that's what has guided me as governor, and I have governed from the center of the political spectrum, and everything I have done as governor has been done in a bipartisan fashion, by definition. And we've been able to make a lot of really good progress by doing that. Um, that deficit that I inherited, $2 billion, it's gone. It's been replaced by three consecutive surpluses. Now the most recent surplus came in the same year that we gave a five, I'm sorry, a $600 million tax cut. Uh, you're not going to hear the president talk about that. You're not going to hear Mr. Brisponi talk about that. But that is the truth. Um, we now have stability in the state of Louisiana that we were lacking for the better part of a decade. And we're making good decisions about how we move our state forward because we're making critical investments like education. The first teacher pay raise in 10 years. The, we increased the block grant uh, funding portion of our funding formula to our school districts. The first new investment in higher education in a decade. And we made a down payment on what will be my number one priority for new investments in education in the second term, and that is a $20 million increase in early childhood education across the state of Louisiana. So, so you, you know that we're doing better. We have the lowest percentage of people uninsured with respect to health insurance in our state's history because of the Medicaid expansion. Uh, it has done great things for our state. It saved us over $300 million in general fund in the first two years alone, helped us to address uh, that budget deficit. It has also helped us to keep open every single hospital in the state of Louisiana. Unlike our neighbors, whether it's Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, where hospitals have closed by the dozens, not a single hospital is closed in the state of Louisiana. Most importantly, 466,000 of our working poor brothers and sisters have access to health insurance. So they get primary care and preventative care uh, so that they get diseases diagnosed earlier. Treatment starts right away and they get a chance to be healthier. Uh, and in many cases, they get a chance to live. Uh, so this is incredibly important for the state of Louisiana. Now, my opponent, Mr. Responi, says he wants to freeze Medicaid. You know what that means? That means a de facto repeal of Medicaid uh, expansion. Uh, that was the results uh, in, in Arizona. That's why the governor of Ohio, John Kasich, a Republican, vetoed a bill passed by his legislature to freeze Medicaid. And by the way, that's the results of studies done by the Louisiana Budget Project and the Pelican Institute out in New Orleans. If he had his way, 300,000 Louisianans would lose, would lose health insurance uh, because of his plans to effectively repeal uh, the Medicaid expansion. We cannot afford that. That would blow up the budget by hundreds of millions of dollars in additional general fund costs that would be incurred in order to pay for the care of the uninsured. Remember I told you, we actually saved money uh, when we expanded Medicaid. He would undo those savings and that money would have to come from somewhere. And I will tell you, it will come from higher education and it will come from health care. That's exactly what Bobby Jindal did uh, for all those years. So when I tell you he wants to go back to the failed policies of Bobby Jindal, that's not rhetoric. That's his plan. Uh, it's a plan that's, that doesn't sell with the Louisiana people, uh, which is why he's trying to nationalize uh, this race. We also know that we're safer. Because of criminal justice reform and the work being done all across the state of Louisiana by law enforcement, uh, you know, the FBI crime report came out for 2018, and crime, violent crime, and murders in Louisiana is decreasing uh, faster than the national average. Uh, which shows that the criminal justice reforms enacted in 2017 are actually making the, the state of Louisiana safer. We no longer have the nation's highest incarceration rate. 
We are saving money. We are reinvesting 70% of the savings into the system to ensure that the reentry programs work better. Uh, we are supporting victims of crime better as well. But, but the most important thing is Louisiana families, Louisiana communities are actually safer. Look, uh, Eddie Responi threatens Louisiana in so many ways. One of the things he wants to do is have a constitutional convention. He can't tell you what in the Constitution he wants to change, but he's willing, he's willing to risk the homestead exemption, which is constitutionally protected, and your taxes will go up if the, if the uh, Constitutional Convention uh, goes into place uh, and they do away with or limit the homestead exemption. Supplemental pay is constitutionally protected to benefit all of our first responders in the state of Louisiana. K through 12 funding in the MFP formula is constitutionally protected. So this is a risky scheme that we should never ever entertain, especially uh, at the insistence of someone uh, who can't even tell you why he wants a constitutional uh, convention. So we just shouldn't go there. Uh, look, I am excited about where we are as a state relative to where we were four years ago. I'm also excited about what I believe the results are going to be on Saturday night because the voters of Louisiana will decide this election and they're going to decide it on Louisiana issues and they know that we are better off. They don't need the president, they don't need anybody else telling them one way or another. Uh, so, so at the end of the day we're going to be successful. I'm encouraging everybody to go out and vote. Obviously I'm encouraging people all across the state of Louisiana uh, to get to know the candidates and their positions on the issues and cast an informed ballot. Uh, and when they do that, there is only one way they can vote. Uh, that is number four for four more years. Uh, that, that's what's going to happen. And I want to thank uh, the people in this room and the people all across the state of Louisiana who are working so hard uh, on this campaign to make sure that we're victorious on Saturday night. Uh, this, this campaign, this election, I should say, is going to be uh, close. We're going to win, but every vote is important. And so every phone call, every door knock, every, everything you can do to move people to the polls is critically important. All right, so with that, I'm going to take questions, and then at the end of the questions, I'm going to come and, and visit with you all uh, some more. Yes, sir? What would you say to all those who are going to Trump's Have a good time, and then go <laughs> vote for me Saturday. <laughs> Governor, how do you answer the, the uh, charges, excuse me, not charges, but the allegations that uh, you're giving millions to undocumented workers, that your support for uh, the border wall has been lax, things that this phony has used in his television advertising? Yeah. How do you answer that? Well, first of all, it's all phony. Uh, the, the, we don't have state dollars going to pay benefits for illegals in the, in the state of Louisiana. Uh, he knows that. Uh, and I will tell you, I've been building flood walls in Louisiana. Uh, there is not a wall to be built here with respect to immig immigration. And I'm focused on the challenges that Louisiana actually faces. And in fact, there are more coastal restoration and protection projects in construction right now than at any point in our history. So I'm focused where I need to be focused. And I will tell you, I think it is shameful that someone wants to run for governor of the state of Louisiana and they run against the city of New Orleans by falsely labeling them as a sanctuary city, a label that hasn't been conferred upon uh, New Orleans or any other uh, city in the state of Louisiana by anybody at the federal government, not by Jeff Sessions, not by the Department of Justice, not by President Trump. Uh, and, and I think it's shameful that he would run for governor of Louisiana by running against New Orleans. Uh, on the other hand, I have been and will continue to be the governor for the entire state of Louisiana, everybody, regardless of geography, regardless of race, regardless of party, uh, and, and we're going to continue to move forward, and I'm going to support all of the cities, uh, towns, and villages across the state of Louisiana. Governor, why do you expect this to be a tight race? Well, we just know that it's coming down uh, to the wire. Uh, now, I, there's not a single poll that doesn't show me ahead. I believe we're going to win. I'm, I'm relatively confident. But at this point, as I guess it is always the case, it's a function of getting the vote out uh, on Saturday. Uh, but if the voters vote uh, the way the posters predict, if the likely voters go out and vote the way they predict, we're going to win. Uh, but that's why we're doing all this work. We take nothing to chance, uh, and, and we're, we leave nothing to chance. We're going to make sure that that actually happens. Any other questions? Governor Edwards, Eddie yes. Bonny says Louisiana is last in the nation. He's going to fix that because he's a businessman. What do you say against that? 
Well, first of all, he's lying. He's lying. Uh, and, and, and he's not going to fix anything because when the hand comes off the Bible, it's going to be mine. Uh, that's number one. Uh, but number two, I just told you, we have the largest economy in the history of our state right now. Uh, we have the most personal income in the history of our state right now. Unemployment is at 4.3%, the lowest in almost 12 years. We actually have people with health insurance above the national average for the first time in our state's history. The uninsured rate is 8%. Nationally, it's 8.9%. Now, the day I became governor, we had one of the highest percentages of uninsured in the country. That, that is no longer the case. We currently have a crime rate uh, that is falling, including violent crime and murders, at a rate that is faster than the national average. Uh, so on score after score after score, he's just wrong. And when it comes to economic development projects, we've landed more than 175 major economic development wins, $41.5 billion of new capital investment, creating 36,000 jobs, including the, the number two economic development project in the country in 2017, which is the biggest one in our state's history, which is DXE Technology uh, in New Orleans. So Mr. Rasponi just couldn't be more wrong. Uh, everything that he says is phony. He, he's done a lot to earn his nickname. I just, he, he's earned it. Uh, and, and so that's, that's how I would answer that question. But the people of Louisiana know better. Uh, and that's why he's fallen flat. Uh, and because he's fallen flat, he's invited the president to come back now for the third time to try to prop him up and divert people's attentions away from his ignorance uh, and, and, and on to things at the national level. Well, that's just not going to work. Anybody else? Yes, sir. What about the oil and gas? Industry? Yes, sir. They seem to claim that you are not. Well, first of all, with respect to gas, production of gas is almost at an all-time high, back to where it was in 2012. Uh, energy exports, you see it right over here, being trumpeted by the president, uh, coming from the state of Louisiana, or higher than ever with respect to liquefied natural gas. We have LNG plants being built from Plaquemines Parish uh, to Port Fouchon to Cameron Parish and to Calcasieu. We have more pipe pipeline capacity right now than we've ever had before. Now, with respect to oil, the prices fell in 2014. They haven't recovered. Uh, but there's some lies being told by Mr. Rasponi here, too. I have never, the state of Louisiana has not sued the first oil and gas company since I've been governor. Uh, and it just hasn't happened. Now, now if you listen to him, uh, you, you will hear something that's completely different than that. We need the price of oil to, to increase so that the investment returns in that sector of our economy uh, will flourish again. Uh, until then, we're going to do everything we can to help that happen, and we're going to continue to diversify our economy uh, to make sure that there's more opportunity and prosperity in Louisiana uh, because we're going to have a better educated and trained workforce. That's why we're investing in our colleges and technical colleges and our universities again. Uh, and by the way, this is working. That's a big part of the 175 major economic development projects that I talked about. Uh, so, so we have... We have a ways to go with respect to the oil portion of, of the oil and gas sector, but the, the gas sector is performing extremely well, uh, and I'm going to continue to do what I can to support that industry. All right, we have time for one more question. What about one, the cyber industry? Yeah. Well, first of all, as you know, being up here in North uh, Louisiana, uh, the I-20 corridor in Louisiana is called the Cyber Corridor. Uh, we have things going on that are tremendously positive. Uh, we have the very first. Uh, cyber security four-year degree program in the state at Grambling State University. We have the very first cyber engineering four-year degree program in the country at Louisiana Tech. Uh, just the other day, I came up to Bossier and announced that, that the Louisiana Tech Research Institute is going to be built. Uh, the state is going to invest in a $10 million facility right there in Bossier to partner with all the folks at the Global Strike Command to make sure that we're doing more to educate and train individuals to help them with their missions. Two-thirds of the nuclear triad commanded right there at Barksdale Air Force Base. And they have tremendous needs for more individuals who offer that expertise. And so we're, we're doing that as well. Uh, but, but also over uh, with respect to CenturyLink in Monroe, uh, because of the education that we're investing again, creating more opportunity uh, with, with these educated, skilled workers, that's why they decided to stay in Monroe with their headquarters, the largest corporate headquarters in the state of Louisiana uh, through 2025. Uh, so with the work that the Cyber Innovation Center is doing, let me tell you in a real-world practical way why this is important. 
Uh, for the first time ever uh, this past summer, the state of Louisiana experienced numerous uh, ransomware attacks, cyber attacks, and it was happening all over the country. We were able to respond very quickly and, and very effectively because of our emphasis on cyber here, the commission that I created, the fact that the emergency support function 17 was created at GOSEP, uh, and we were able to respond very, very quickly. All of our schools opened on time, even though many of them were attacked, and as it turned out, people all over the country were calling Louisiana to find out how they should respond uh, to the cyber attacks that they were experiencing. So this is another area to prove where Mr. Rosconi is wrong. We're actually leading the country when it comes to uh, the cyber world as well. Look, I want to thank y'all for coming out. I'll, I'll finish where I started. I'm excited. I'm optimistic, both about this election and about the state of Louisiana. We're going to keep moving forward. Everybody together. We're going to continue to put people over politics, and we're going to put Louisiana first, and it will continue to benefit everybody in our great state over the next four years. God bless you, and thank you so much.